Once you have an idea of what you're looking for, uh, there are some tests that you can do to confirm your suspicion. Uh, the primary way to look for the bacterial pathogens is through stool culture, or SSYC, uh, which is Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia, and Campylobacter. Uh, as part of this test, the, you'll also get um, a test for the Shigatoxin, and um, the lab will report this out as well. Uh, Ova and Parasite is good for people who are travelers. Um, and this will look for Entamoeba uh, as well as Cryptosporidium and Giardia. Uh, there's a separate test for Cryptosporidium and Giardia that will identify the antigen through a latex agglutination test. So this can be ordered separately and it is more sensitive than the Ova and Parasite, which is simple light microscopy. Uh, for C. diff, the test of choice is a C. diff toxin PCR. Uh, this is very sensitive, so it shouldn't be ordered in the absence of uh, the patient having diarrhea and should not be used as a test of cure. The fecal leukocytes are often ordered as part of the workup for diarrhea. This looks for inflammation in the stool. In reality, it doesn't really help us that much in the diagnosis. Uh, because you can have uh, infectious diarrhea in the presence of fecal leukocytes or in the absence of it. So it doesn't really change management that much or help in the differential diagnosis. Um, it's still part of the workup, um, probably out of tr tradition, but uh, in reality it doesn't help that much. If you suspect that the patient has dehydration based on your physical exam findings, you may also want to consider doing a basic metabolic panel and electrolytes to know if you need to replete um, these electrolytes. Uh, if the patient's having a significant amount of diarrhea, it's not uncommon for them to have a low K and a low mag, especially with cryptosporidium. Uh, you can have large volume loss of electrolytes and uh, require hospitalization for several days to get this under control. Most patients respond very well to therapy. Uh, if for some reason the patient isn't getting better or you aren't able to come up with a diagnosis, the next steps in evaluating their diarrhea could include a CT scan. In this case, you would be looking for colitis uh, or other pathology in the bowel. Um, or considering a colonoscopy. Uh, and in this case, you could do a biopsy of the colon to look for uh, other viral causes like um, CMV, which is uncommon outside of HIV but not unheard of, uh, or other non-infectious causes of diarrhea like inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, most of the time, we don't have to go on to these next steps because the diarrhea uh, either resolves um, with treatment or resolves because it's self-limited. The treatment, of course, depends on what the etiology is. Uh, for cases of bacterial, which would be the Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia, or Campylobacter, uh, the treatment of choice is a fluoroquinolone. Uh, the earlier generation fluoroquinolones, such as Cipro or Levofloxacin, are preferred over Moxifloxacin because they have more gram-negative activity. Uh, an alternative would be azithromycin. Uh, most of the enteric pathogens are sensitive to the fluoroquinolones, but it's still good to send them out for susceptibility testing uh, because we have seen some resistance uh, amongst the Salmonella and Shigella uh, to the fluoroquinolones. So if that's the case, then you want to modify your uh, treatment based on the results of the susceptibility testing. Uh, there's some resistance in other countries to fluoroquinolones as well. So in certain parts of the world, um, the treatment of choice is azithromycin. Uh, if the pathogen is C. diff, um, the first-line treatment in the first episode is metronidazole, or in severe cases, oral vancomycin. Uh, there are other treatments for C. diff uh, that are beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, for Giardia, uh, the treatment is metronidazole or tinidazole. Tinidazole, uh, tinidazole is a second-generation nitroamidazole that's given as a single dose uh, and can be used in immunocompetent patients. Uh, for cryptosporidium, if you're an immunocompetent patient, you can be treated with nitazoxanide. Uh, if the patient has HIV with cryptosporidium, the best treatment for that 
is antiretroviral treatment. Uh, and then most viruses uh, are self-limited. Uh, we don't have any specific treatment for norovirus or for rotavirus. Uh, so in summary, uh, the first thing to do is to make sure that the patient is actually having diarrhea, confirm the number of episodes, and make sure that it's not just loose stools. Use the epidemiologic clues from your history to create your differential diagnosis. Most of the time, you aren't going to be able to nail it down uh, without additional studies. Uh, in this case, if the diarrhea is significant, then ciprofloxacin plus metronidazole is a good empiric regimen until you get the results of your studies back. If the patient isn't responding uh, to the empiric treatment, then you should reconsider whether this is an infectious cause and start looking for an alternative diagnosis. Thanks for listening, and um, I hope you learned something.